The year is 2100, and for over a generation, Mars has been isolated from Earth. Cut off by politics, distance, and survival, the colonists forged a path of their own. They called themselves the Red Iron, hardened by the harsh Martian soil, and a bitter resolve to survive whatever the unforgiving environment threw their way. What began as a frontier settlement transformed into a warrior society, a culture of discipline and steel, forged in the fires of isolation. Earth's leaders considered them lost. Mars, a failed experiment. They believed the Martians would fade into obscurity. But then came the Vreka, a terrifying alien armada sweeping through humanity's outposts and colonies, aiming straight for Earth. When Earth called for aid, the answer was silence. None of their alliances held strong, no help from afar. But Earth's leaders weren't counting on the Red Iron, the exiles of Mars. Mars wasn't blind to the events unfolding in the skies. Its radars had picked up the Vreka fleet, their ships massing and advancing toward the Sol system like a storm front. High Commander Jack Zan and his hardened officers gathered around the table at Red Watch, the Martian military command center, grim yet resolute. Earth thinks we're dead, Zan's voice was low, his tone like the Martian dust dry and cold. But Mars lives, and today we fight not for them but for our own blood and our pride. His lieutenant, Des Voss, cracked a rare grin. The Vreka came looking for an easy target, but they'll find something they never prepared for, the Red Iron. The warships of Mars, painted in deep Martian red, rose from their cradles on Olympus Mons. It was the first time they'd be used in real combat beyond the training drills, the only purpose they had known until now. Their warships, forged from Mars' iron-rich ores, were heavier, built for resilience and brutality, every surface optimized for attack. Unlike Earth's sleek cruisers, the Martian ships looked like leviathans, looming and ancient, filled with warriors who had spent their lives waiting for this moment. The Red Iron Fleet emerged from Mars' orbit, gliding in grim formation, their engines dark as they coasted on approach. The Vreka fleet began to tighten its formation in response, but the Martians were waiting for that. Commander Revik Torin, Zan second in command, relayed orders. All ships, concentrate your fire on their central formation. Show them what Martian iron feels like. As the Martian warships opened fire, the space between them and the Vreka blazed with deadly intent. The Martians launched relentless attacks, piercing shields and crushing hulls. Their strategies honed from constant combat drills on a planet where failure meant death. They adapted to the Vreka's tactics in real time, turning their own methods against them, a terrifying demonstration of the Martians' ruthless ingenuity. After breaking through the Vreka's defenses, a Red Iron strike team, led by Jax himself, boarded one of the alien motherships, armed with custom Martian weaponry and reinforced suits adapted to Mars' extreme conditions. They moved with precision and purpose, each step an echo of their training, their formation unyielding. The Vreka, tall, sinewy creatures with scales like obsidian, threw everything they had at the Martians. But for every Martian who fell, three Vreka were left lifeless in his wake. Jax and his men fought with the fury of years lived in survival's shadow, an unstoppable force like the dust storms of their homeland, sweeping through the alien corridors. They didn't just defeat the Vreka, they overwhelmed them making the Vreka believe for the first time that they'd come across a species more relentless, more savage, than they had ever encountered. The Martians' attacks had shattered the core of the Vreka fleet. In desperation, the Vreka commander initiated a self-destruct sequence, aiming to take out the Martian forces, even if it cost them their own. But Commander Jax was already ahead of them. Red Iron isn't finished with you yet, he murmured, signaling his men. They sprinted for their escape shuttles, setting explosive charges as they went. They launched just as the Vreka ship's core erupted, a brilliant supernova in the cold of space. The blast ripped through the enemy fleet, obliterating what was left of the Vreka forces. The Martian ships, battered but unbroken, returned to formation, waiting in silence as they watched Earth's skies clear. Back on Mars, the people held their breath, watching their fleet's triumphant return. Zan, Torin, and the soldiers of the Red Iron stood with pride as they received a message from Earth, a plea masked as gratitude, begged them to return and help rebuild, to fight once again at their side. Zan's reply was sharp, uncompromising. The Red Iron is done with you, Earth. We saved you, but we don't belong to you. We are Martians now, and we'll be ready if you ever think of calling us home again. As the Martian fleet disappeared back toward their red planet, a new chapter began for humanity a divided path, one between the delicate comforts of Earth and the hardened steel of Mars. Earth was safe but the children of Mars had proven that they were their own sovereign strength, as fierce and independent as the world they had claimed.